Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars and I have for you today the first in four installments of Light Worker Homework 3 to channel messages of light and love from the stars by Alice B. Claggett. This, the first installment of Light Worker Homework 3, has two parts. Uh, one has to do with the solar storms and the other has to do with exper experiencing unconditional love during solar maximums. So to begin with the first um, subheading, that is mild solar storm today, surf is up, exclamation point. Before I read this section, I'd like to explain a little about proton fall and the Kp index, otherwise known as the planetary K index. And these have to do with space weather. Proton fall is a term I invented and it's uh, along the lines of rainfall, except that what's falling are protons from the sun to earth. And I calculated using two figures available on spaceweather.com that's www.spaceweather.com, uh, a website of Dr. Tony Phillips. I believe he's PhD. And so, over on the left-hand column of the home page of spaceweather.com, at the top, are two figures dealing with the solar wind. One is speed, measured in kilometers per second and the other is density measured in protons per cubic centimeter. To get proton fall I multiply the two together. Now since I started doing this some years ago I've found that solar wind proton fall tends to vary from close to zero to upwards of 30,000. And uh, so uh, when I refer to low proton fall, I'm speaking of proton fall from zero to about 3,000. When I speak of medium proton fall, it might be 3,000 to 6,000. And high proton fall is 6,000 to often 15,000 sometimes it's much higher than that. The thing about proton fall is that it, it, there are various cognitive states to do with the different sorts of proton fall, low, medium, and high. A uh, very high proton fall results in what they call cognitive dysfunction or cognitive dissonance. Um, and it makes it difficult to do fine motor skills, tasks, uh, during that time. For instance, driving during high proton fall is highly inadvisable, as well as doing things that are, um, that can't be undone, such as selling stocks, <laughs> or getting into uh, divorce disputes, or having a a final argument with the child and, and sending them out of the house or any number of other things, things to do that result in violence or in, in violation of the law and get you in, into jail and so forth. It's good to, to just lay low during times of high proton fall. During those times you can do things like housework or taking a nap or sunbathing or trudging about in the woods or just lying down under a tree, things like that. You could try routine repetitive tasks as long as they don't involve sharp or heavy objects. It's good to lay low and watch the wind blow during times of high proton fall, and that's because those are the times of high cognitive dissonance, high cognitive dysfunction. You may find during times of high proton fall that you have visions, or what they call hallucinations, or mystical visions. And those are good times to journal what you see because 
Times of High Proton Fall offer an opportunity for a vision into other worlds, other dimensions, and other timelines, and they're wonderful times for light workers and healers. So they're exciting times, but times when, in which we must exercise caution as far as motor and cognitive skills are concerned. During times of low proton fall, it's a good time to do the types of things that that require strong decision-making abilities, such as rebalancing your stock or bond portfolio. Um, it's a very good time for driving and fine motor skills. It's a good time to walk a tightrope if you have that adv avocation or go rock climbing. You know what I mean? It's a time when you can test yourself and be very grounded. And in between is pretty much what happens quite a lot, three to six thousand. Uh, those are times that I find somewhat exhilarating, but not so much so that I can't perform most of my daily routines. So that's a heads up regarding proton fall and the density of proton fall, the severity of it. Now, the other um, thing I was going to explain is what I usually call the KP index. Some people call it the planetary K index. Um, it's measured in three hour data bars by the NOAA SWPC, which, as I recall, is the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and the second SWPC, Space Weather Prediction Center in Boulder, Colorado. And these, these data are available to anyone. They're public domain, and they're in three-hour bar charts. Um, the charts measure the excitability, the turmoil in the magnetosphere of Earth on a, um, an index from zero to nine. Okay, And the chart will show green bars from zero to three that would be actually no geostorm, mild geo weather. Then KP of four is shown as a yellow bar, meaning uh, time to be wary, a transition zone from mild to, to geostorm weather. Then KP index five to nine is, is red bars, very striking red bars, and not so often encountered except during solar maximums. Um, it has to do with sunspot activity and uh, solar winds and shearing back and forth of, of various types of solar winds that roil up our magnetosphere. And those are the times more akin to uh, high proton fall and cognitive dysfunction, cognitive dissonance, and so forth. So setting aside those two measures of geostorm conditions, I'll begin with the text. And here goes. This was written some time ago, and it goes like this. Proton fall is 6,625.7 right now. Now you may recall that's just at the point where we move into uh, severe proton fall, just above the 6,000 mark. The planetary K index, the KP index, has been at level 5. You recall that's the beginning of geostorm levels for the KP index. At level 5 for 12 hours out of the last 15 hour interval. A mild geostorm is in progress, or was back then. Now then it has a picture here of the planetary K index chart with three hour data from the NOAA SWPC as of April 17, 2021 at 9.30 Universal Time. And it looks like this. You can see the red bars. That represents uh, the beginning of geostorm area. You can see the green bars. They represent no geostorm. 
and the yellow bar in the middle there that represents an intermediate level between no geostorm and the beginning of geostorms. So you see there are two, three, five bars there that are red. Each bar is a three-hour three interval. So that's 15 hours worth of geostorm, albeit moderate geostorm, during the time frame of the graph. That's what I was excited about. I'll read you the legend for the image. It goes like this. Estimated planetary K index, three hour data, begin 2021, April 15th, Universal Time, by NOAA, SWPC, Boulder, Colorado, USA, public domain. Description, four red bars, KP index level five, among the most recent five bars, the other bar being yellow, which is to say, 12 hours of KP index at level five and three hours at level four. A mild geostorm is in progress. Now you could go to NOAA SWPC and look up the charts for the estimated planetary K index and find out every three hours how that's updated and what the situation is with geostorms in the magnetosphere of Earth if you begin to find yourself sensitive to those sorts of uh, electromagnetic forces here on Earth. Then it will be of, of, of great importance to you as it is to me. Solar cycle 25 is ramping up, heading for the fireworks typical of solar maximums. I see online that the current maximum is predicted to take place in the year 2025, only four years from now. As may be seen from the graph of the solar cycle 25 prediction curve below, surf is up. At the time when I wrote this article, there was not too much data for 2020, going on 2021, and the image that I put there uh, has been updated on my website, Awakening with Planet Earth by Alice B. Claggett, https colon slash slash awakeningwithplanetearth.com uh, Right now what I have for you is the ISIS solar cycle sunspot number progression as of February 2021. And it, as you can see, it shows a bell curve more or less with the top of the curve sometime in the year 2025. These are in the left hand column sunspot number tops out at over 100. At the bottom is are the years from 2020 to 2035. And these uh, ISIS solar cycle spun sunspot number progressions are updated all the time by NASA so you can get them from the NOAA and their public domain. This one has the following legend. Solar cycle 25 predictions as of February 2021 by NOAA, 27 February 2021 in Wikimedia Commons, public domain. Um, so, so that's it for now. These are tools for light workers for the coming times. God bless you all. Keep you safe and be with you through all your days. <laughs>